Welcome to the channel PK2023. Hope everyone has a good time watching our videos. Weghorst's in Up Cup cameo shows Chasm Manchester United must cross. Eric Ten Hag turned to striker for equaliser against Manchester City but only underlined how money bloats old fate years ago. With 14 minutes remaining, Pep Guardiola made his first substitution of the afternoon. Off came Kevin De Bruyne, the best player on the pitch, perhaps with a view to giving him a rest before next Saturday's Champions League final. On came a fresh Phil Foden, one of the best young players in Europe. Right. Your move, Eric Ten Hag. So it was that a minute later, Manchester United unveiled the secret weapon that they hoped would win them the 2023 FA Cup, Wout Weghorst. Moving a large and unwieldy object like Weghorst from the substitute's bench onto a football pitch is no simple task. You cannot just send him on, there are processes and protocols to be followed. It took a team of eight men, a hydraulic lift and an intricate system of ropes and pulleys to winch the 30-year-old Dutch forward onto the touchline, whereupon he received his final instructions from Ten Hag, the contents of which we can only guess at. Get us a goal would probably have been pushing his luck for a guy who has scored twice in 30 games for United. More likely it was something a little less ambitious. Get us a free kick, get us a pass, get us a header. In any case, Weghorst trundled on, clumped around for a while like a confused ruminant, and got his first touch four minutes after coming on. He was offside. Not that we should be too harsh on Weghorst here, a decent, honest, hard-working player whose only real failing has simply been to find himself in the wrong place at the wrong time, and perhaps in the wrong sport. The real problem is how a club of United size can spend a billion pounds in a decade on transfer fees and still find itself sending on Weghorst and Scott McTominay to try to win a cup final. How do you spend a billion pounds and still end up with a team this unbalanced, a squad this thin, players barely fit to buy the shirt let alone wear it? On the touchline, Ten Hag was a compact, measured presence, all short and simple hand movements, lots of minor adjustments, like a man trying to arrange everyone into a family photograph. In essence this is the Ten Hag method, no sweeping over reactions, no grandiose gestures, just progress in small increments. But here, it simply reinforced the idea this was a game won not in 2023 but the years before, a game City have really been winning for a decade. Look at the starting size. Look at the benches. What else, realistically? did we expect to happen? Take Victor Lindelof, as many United fans probably wish somebody would. In recent weeks he is covered admirably for the absences of Rafael Varane and Lisandro Martinez in defense. But because he is Lindelof, there is always the possibility he will make a grave error 10 seconds into a crucial game. And so it was here, as his awkward clearing header fell perfectly for ILK Gundogan to score the fastest goal in cup final history. Lindelof's contract expires next summer and United are rumored to want to extend it. Or take David De G, a goalkeeper still occasionally capable of brilliance but whose inconsistency should probably have seen him moved on four years ago. His reactions are simply not what they were, a fact apparent long before his effort at saving Gundogan's second goal, not so much a dive as a mild stretch, like a man trying to fish the remote control out from under the sofa. Deji is 32 years old, on about £375,000 a week and is reported to be on the verge of signing a new deal. For some reason United seem to have ended up with more of these in between players than any other club, players who are sort of good enough, or who were once good enough, or who on their best days can convince people they may still be good enough. Is Fred part of the problem or part of the solution? Is Anthony Marshall? Is Donny van de Beek? Is Anthony Alangle ever going to be a thing? Is Diogo Dalot potentially world class or just quite good? Nobody at United really seems to know. Perhaps this pervasive flux, this corrosive ambiguity, explains why United have been such a curate's egg this season. By most measures they have had a good campaign. They have a small core of very good players, room for improvement and a discernible playing identity. But games like this, and opponents like this, underline the size of their task. The Gulf 2 city can be measured not just in goals and trophies but in years, 
in the reckless decisions made long before Ten Hag took charge. There is no hand gesture that will reverse the signing of Cristiano Ronaldo. There is no team talk that will undo an entire era of waste and neglect, the fat contracts that made so many underperforming players so hard to move on. At full time most of United's players sank to the turf. Fred knelt too, but instead of weeping or despairing he simply bowed his head, turned his palms upwards to face the sky and said a few quiet words of prayer to the Almighty. Now here was a guy with the right idea. I think in the first minute is everything in that you uh, create a great chance, but we didn't score. So we have to be more clinical on our chances we produce in the first half. And then in the attack, we concede then and we gave away a big chance. And also then in the end, we gave away a goal. And that can't happen, must not happen. Um, lose maybe a little bit focus. Also a bit unlucky because it was never a free kick where the corner is coming from. So yeah, and then you can't bounce back anymore. But that is what we have to do on Sunday. You say that your side needs to be more clinical. Can you put your finger on why they were unable to score the chances that they had tonight? No, we had the chances clear uh, with Anthony Dos Santos, Anthony Marshall, Marcus Rashford, uh, Casemiro, all great opportunities and one has to be in. Luke Shaw has concerns speaking to us just a moment ago. This is a problem not just tonight, but in other games. Would you agree? Do you have concerns around the scoring of this side in general? No, I don't have concerns. Uh, it's about uh, keep the focus. And when we don't lose the focus in the final and dying seconds of the game, then we take that point. And yeah, if, in the end, if you can't win him because you don't finish your chances, then don't lose. What did you make of the penalty that was given? How did you see it? Yeah, I've seen that it's a handball and maybe he is out of balance. Maybe he get a push from the back, but I can't see because there are so many players in. And that's up more is my uh, anger is about the free kick before because it was never a free kick. And uh, there were so many bad tackles tonight uh, were not a whistle, but on that uh, is nothing. It's a fair block and that's a whistle. Still Kevin De Bruyne. Feet of David De Gea. He'll block that shot on target. Gundogan. Yes, oh, inside left lane maker. Going for goal. A number of occasions. He might not quite be Edison, but he's pretty competent. De Bruyne. He's on to Gundogan. Fernandez. Now Rashford. It's Marcus Rashford! There was a bit of panic from the city back line there. Stokes. Never hit that. Square it for Haaland. This is Grealish. This is Haaland. That's a save. And there's Gundogan. And the offside flag is up to deny him a hat trick. Thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe channel, comment, and sharing our videos.